Shawan, Barak Thang Yahweh, Barak Thang Yahweh Shai, Barak Thang Yahweh, Barak Thang Yahweh Shai, Call Halayla Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Kwankadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, <clears throat> pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, <clears throat> and double honor and respect to the elders, to the apostles and great millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. So I want to go into this briefly. And first of all, who is that weapon? What is that weapon com comprised of? <clears throat> These devils are shadow banned in the video, but nevertheless, I'm going to keep it moving. So I want to go into the threat of the world and the hazard to the earth. So I want to go back in time. <clears throat> I want to travel back in time. Shalom, beloved. Barak thumb. Okay, so I want to go into this and interpret the scriptures today. <clears throat> no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. So there is a protective hedge around the Lord's elect. And he has set his eyes upon the apple of his eye. And that is the Lord's chosen elect that have been chosen before the foundation of the world. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. I'm going to go here first. <coughs> Excuse me. Go to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8. I'm going to go down to verse 1st yes let me go to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 let's go to verse 1 <clears throat> Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7. Sirach, chapter 7. Not Ecclesiastes. Sirach. <clears throat> Sirach 7 and 1. <clears throat> Do no evil, so shall no harm come unto thee. Depart from the unjust, and iniquity shall turn away from thee. So what I want to talk about briefly is what's coming upon the earth and the scenario that's being shaped or set up the plot for lack of better words if if you're not equipped with a detection device that can detect sicknesses plagues epidemics then that individual is going to be deemed a national hazard or a walking threat. <clears throat> so a biohazard is a threat to national security. This is why the Bible says it shall come in like madmen, sparing none. 
and then the masses, which is about 70%. And that is where the generally the media targets the 70%, the sheeple. These are those that just walk around blindly without a clue as to what's going on. So when the Bible says, then shall that wicked be revealed, then it goes hand in hand with the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, for he knoweth that he have a short time. So these implantable devices are going to be the solution or the recommended answer to protect the populace. And the 70% or so is going to believe that the government is doing a good deed <clears throat> to protect the citizens. But the reality is, this is the ultimate control measure. And those that don't have the device is going to be assumed to be a threat to national security. So this device is, the le is designed to monitor vitals, sicknesses, disease, harmful substance. And it's getting to the point now, even in the state of Virginia, they're making it a law where you cannot travel without a, a, a digital ID. The driver's licenses are being converted over to digital IDs. And the long-term plan is to make it so you cannot travel or fly without this digital ID. So the driver's license is being converted to a digital ID. Guess what else? <clears throat> you got it. The international passport. So it's coming to the point where the elect is going to be placed at the forefront of the target. The crosshairs is going to be on the Lord's chosen. There's the reason the scriptures say, then shall, ye, then shall it be known who are my chosen. So the elect are not going to be able to fly or travel internationally without being marked with, with this digital device <clears throat> and are going to be assumed to be a walking biohazard. Now, the dangerous part of that, or what goes with that is, to be deemed a walking biohazard means there's a green light given to take your life. So this thing is going to get very serious. It's going to get rough or worse before it gets better. So when the Bible is talking about no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. <clears throat> it's talking about the regenerated spirit of Cain that's on the earth, which came back as Esau whose blessing is the sword. We can read about that in Revelation chapter 6, that he had power to take peace from the earth. Let's go here to Genesis 4. So that power is resonant in his sword, in his military. And now the military has been connected to advanced digital surveillance. Sensors, lasers, Bluetooth technology. There's a reason that the app LinkedIn was created. So if you're not linked in to the beast, which is the grid underneath the European Union and NATO, then you are deemed a threat. So this devil has gotten desperate. How many saw the recent article? that the so-called Native Americans, Latinos, and Negroes are now being nested underneath so-called white supremacy. So that is a sign of desperation. 
how in the hell can a black ass so-called Negro or a bloodline descendant of so-called Latinos and Native Americans be nested underneath so-called white supremacy? So in this desperate attempt, the dragon is showing you who his target has been all along. So you black only Israelites that don't understand the prophecies, you've been defeated. Your mouth is closed. The devil is showing you who's in the crosshairs. Does not the Bible describe Esau as a great hunter? Let's go here. We're going to read this first. Cain, <clears throat> Genesis 4, verse 6. We're in Genesis chapter 4, verse 5. Let's go to verse 3. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. But Cain, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So when Cain came back as Esau, he was rejected. So we can see a direct correlation to Cain, his sacrifice, being rejected. So a sacrifice is comprised of the fruits of our labor. So Esau today is sacrificing Moism the Rainbow Coalition Doctrine, Feminism, Women's Liberation, and so-called White Supremacy, and making oysters, crab, shrimp, lobster a delicacy, contaminating the earth through chemtrails. These are sacrifices. So the Most High, being all-knowing, rejected this man before the foundation of the world because he is a byproduct of his own creation. So Esau is a direct regeneration of Cain. We're going to prove it. Genesis, Genesis 4, verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Connects beautifully to the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath. So his sacrifices in modern times have been rejected. His works, let's go into this word Cain. <coughs> Excuse me. Cain. Cain comes from the Hebrew. 2014, Kayan, Kayan. No, it's Quayan. Quayan is a dagger or killing instrument. So who was prophesied? By thy sword shall thy live. By thy sword shalt thou live. So we can see there is a direct linkage to Cain from Esau. And Abel would come back or Abel would get regenerated through Seth and come back on the earth as a, uh, Jacob. Plain, holy, righteous. So Quayan, so that weapon when we read the title, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. So the ultimate weapon that's going to end in a major cataclysmic event on earth are nuclear weapons. By thy sword shall thou live. So the biggest sword on the earth are these ICBMs. 
So he was given a great sword. That's the devil, Esau, that would come back on the earth as Esau. So that's that weapon, Quayon, Cain. Yup, brother GMS in his likeness, Shalom, Barakatha, Romans 9 and 21. <clears throat> Have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? So the devil is watching these videos. So his countenance is falling. He's mean mugging the videos. Them damn Negroes, I'm sick of this shit. I'm sick of it. Well, you the devil, and we didn't make you, okay? So he's rough right now. So his countenance, his face, his visage is grimacing. He's mean mugging, so to speak. <coughs> so he was made to be the devil. But he wants to take that anger out on the Lord's creation, the righteous seed. See, let's go to Romans 9 and 22. What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. So he was tailor made to be a vessel of perdition, which means destruction, which is coupled with the daughter of Babylon. That's why the Bible says utterly waste her. So when you look at Esau's name, Aisha, wasted away, Aisha Shura, wasted away is he. So even in his name, it's a nomen omen to be created, used as a whipping stick, and then ultimately destroyed. That's why the Bible is saying, utterly waste her, the daughter of Babylon. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom, so they cannot be separated from the kingdom in which they reign, the daughter of Babylon, Edom. So Cain's name is Quayon. And that great weapon is the noisome pestilence that's going to consume the earth with fire. See, let's go to Psalms 91. The noisome pestilence but the elect are going to be brought through the fire, preserved, protected. When this fire consumes this place, when this man tries to mandate this device that monitors vital signs, that checks for sicknesses, so-called, then the Lord is going to cause a standard of fire to consume the earth. Psalms 91 Verse 1, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. So the protection starts underneath the hedge of the doctrinal truth. Verse 3, surely... He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. So when we read about this noisome pestilence, it is the major destruction that comes in the form of nuclear war. Armageddon, Hadmagadwan, mountain of troops. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So we don't need to be thinking carnally how to take up weapons. Today I was out at one of my favorite coffee shops, a fat Edomite wearing a tight ass suit, looking like he's 12 months pregnant and with some dark shades on. Just, I'm sitting outside. He walks next to me and just stops and stares at me. Don't speak. Don't sit down. Don't go in to order coffee. Stares at me for about a couple of minutes and then leaves. So we're not trying to take up weapons or thinking carnally. So this 12-month 
pregnant looking Edomite just walked off. So I just stared at him back like what? Yep. Let's keep going. Brother Jim Escobar Adama. Second Peter 3 and 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the element shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This is the noisome pestilence. So Peter was reiterating what he wrote as David prophesying through the spirit of Yahweh Shai. So we're reading about that noisome pestilence. The animal kingdom is going to pass away with a great noise. So this devil, the Edomites that were created to be destroyed, they're only going to have a small residue left to go into slavery. Psalms 91 verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. These are feathers. These are dark sayings for the so-called UFOs. The caveman is thinking this is a real eagle that's going to come and grab us up with her claws and hold us close to her bosom. No, devil. The secrets are revealed to his servants, the prophets. It's talking about flying vessels. Why do you think the Pentagon stood up a UFO watchtower or task force? These are chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. So these arrows are nuclear missiles. Until this day, they're called nuclear missiles. I had an Edomite come on my page talking about Amman Abad. It doesn't take 200 million missiles to destroy America. No shit, Sherlock. But the Bible says, utterly waste her. That means overkill, you bird brain genius. Spare no arrows. Spare no arrows, caveman. So that means it's going to be an overkill. This place is hated. If you've ever seen somebody murdered by knives, it's, it's about 30 or 40 punctures. That's the daughter of Babylon. She's going to be penetrated, the virgin daughter of the Chaldeans. So you cavemen cannot understand or decipher the message. So we kindly ask you to shut the hell up. We've listened to you for 500 years of your lives. Let's keep going. If you ever see a murder victim, there's about 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 puncture wounds. Utterly waste her. Spare no arrows. And this devil trying to calculate megatons and kilotons. Absolute idiot. Now let's go here to Malachi 4 and 1. Brother Gabar Ayash serving Yahawashai. Malachi 4 and 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, gay, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall lead them neither root nor branch. So even when this place is on fire, the Bible says, I will send fanners. So these fanners are going to exacerbate or worsen the inferno. That's why it's going to create a lava or liquid fire effect, lava. So we don't listen to you cave people anymore, okay? Nothing but poop comes out of your mouth. Mixed with vomit. That's it. So be quiet. Psalms 91, verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, 
nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday, utterly waste her. So this is going to be massive overkill so that we can understand. But the Lord is protecting his inheritance, his remnant, to carry on the seed of royal nobility. So now that we know that this weapon comes from Cain, which was reincarnated as Esau, is that great sword, the nuclear missile. So this man was given power to take peace from the earth. So he's drawing his power from his lion signs, technology, weaponry, fire, or firepower. Go here. So no weapon formed against the Lord's elect shall prosper. This will be one of my favorites. Brother GMS and his likeness. Isaiah 26 and 20. Come, my people, enter thou into my chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. So the Lord's wrath and indignation is going to come upon the caveman that stole his inheritance, his precious stones and jewels, and just called us black and Negro and slave, and now trying to roll us up underneath white supremacy. How in the hell can I be rolled up under white supremacy? And I look like a damn chocolate mocha candy bar. So this devil is desperate to go after you jakes. We told you. Isaiah 26 and 21. So these chambers are the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. That's going to take up his elect. So no weapon that is formed against the Lord's chosen shall prosper. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose. <laughs> Isaiah 26 and 21. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, or the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So the Lord is revealing the workers of iniquity and judging the dead, the nations. Some are going to be brought back just to have shackles and chains Slap on them. Remember, Kill Gates said they thought this epidemic or pandemic was serious. Wait until they see the next one that's coming. So these devils are planning. There's three different sicknesses, I'll use that word, that they're bringing up next or releasing. There was even a march can't remember where the march was, but Edomite women were saying the so-called white man is the problem. And they were holding up signs that man of sin is being revealed. The Bible says his widows shall not weep for him. So when you've been revealed as the culprit, as the virus on the earth, then you have to destroy everything in sight for fear that is coming after you, or that the inhabitants are going to come for you. That's why Cain said, my punishment is greater than I can bear. So when the green light is turned on, there's going to be a citizen's arrest at the coming of the Lord and the activation of his saints, pursuant to Obadiah verse 21. Yup, Brother GMS Ayash, Isaiah 29, verse 15. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? So the Lord can see you devils. 
There is no darkness that can obscure his eyes. His eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. When you cannot hide in your secret chambers, in your dark hidden caves, or your underground taverns, your doomsday bunkers, your nuclear fallout <coughs> plan, or your underground escape bunkers. Shalom, beloved. Let's go to Isaiah 54. So that weapon is talking about the great sword that comes from Quayon, Cain. Cain's name is Quayon, which is a miniature sword who would be regenerated onto the earth as Aisha, wasted away. Aisha Shura or Esau. Wasted away is he. Somebody post Psalms 144 and 10, please. So the Lord is preserving his heritage from the great sword, from the quayan or the mini dagger. Okay? These are the little minions. Why oh, you think they made that cartoon minions? Those are Edomites. Many devils came out of the big devil. King Esau and little devlets, for lack of better words. Little devils. Brother Chazak Ban Yahweh, Shalom Barakatha. Psalms 144, verse 10. It is he that giveth salvation unto thee, who delivereth David, his servant, from the hurtful sword. So the Lord is preserving a noble class, a regal bloodline from great devastation. We just read it. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Nakash, sorcery. So that word nakash is the Hebrew word for serpent. So their right hand is sorcery and witchcraft, divination. When you look up some of these ingredients in our food, candy, water, wine, champagne, it ties back to the ingredients of ancient witchcraft and sorcery to make us docile, passive, calcify our pineal glands. That's why a lot of you jakes are bugged out. No matter how much this man kill us, you're still saying he loves us and he means well. Your mind is all jacked up and polluted. You've been mentally sodomized. So when you're mentally sodomized, you got a gaping hole of brain matter missing. Your brain matter has been removed or replaced or displaced. So you can't think or function. Bugs out of your damn mind. That's why we're asking you to be quiet. Be quiet in these last days. Let's go to Isaiah 54. So the Lord is saying, no, the Edomites are not going to hurt his people and their destructive firepower. They're blessing the sword. Let's read it. <coughs> Isaiah 54, the book of Isaiah, chapter 54. Let's go to verse 14. <clears throat> In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. See that? Come, my people. Enter thou into my chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. You see? So if you're a hood rat or two-third, you're not going to have the keys to enter into the chambers. This is only reserved seating 
of the Lord's elect are not going to have a simp smoking the blackened mouth or a Cuban cigar. Say, yo, man, that was dope. Did you see that? That was dope. Yo, ain't going to happen. The elect are going to be like, okay, we're being taken up on a wine wrath of amongst that number. You promised this, Lord. Here we go. Let's go. Just going to be looking up, enjoying the elevator ride up. No strings attached. And our feet are not going to be dashed against the stone. It's going to be an extension up into the cloud. The Bible says that our enemies beheld us. <clears throat> Isaiah 54, verse 14. In righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shall be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. When you look at the major destructive catastrophic effects of a nuclear explosion, it turns everything into dust. So there's no way to escape it unless you're a billionaire or multi-trillionaire and you're 500 feet underground or two miles underground. But they're just being preserved for slavery. The Lord put them in their minds to build these underground caves, to build the underground caves or escape bunkers. That's the elite. They're going to be the first fruits of slavery. So they're going to be cheering and watching the destruction of the poor on high-definition TV. Happy cave people drinking wine and champagne, eating fruit and shit with whipped cream, thinking they made it. You see, high-fiving each other, their fellow cave beast partners, but not so cave animals. The mighty men of the Lord of the house of David is going to come visit you. Though they dig into hell, my arm shall seek them out, so to speak. That's the right arm of the mighty battle axe of the Lord. So they're going to be celebrating and drinking champagne, watching the poor get burned up. But the Lord's elect are going to be ascended up. Isaiah 54 and 15. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. See? So though they gather together and high five and beat their little hairy chests all a, for naught, just a show. In the military, we say a poop show. But we use the S-H-I-T. That's what they're going to be putting on in their hitting chambers. So they're going to fall into the pit. They're going to become servants. Imagine putting a dog leash on an international banker, calling him a byword like Rover. You see, Sparky, Shrek, get your ass in here, Shrek, and get to work. Okay, men that are not moved by emotions are going to have chains on you. Brother <laughs> GMS in his likeness, Psalms 10 and 15. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. Beautiful. Brother Gabar Dhamma. Revelation 21 and 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So we got to put the pieces together here. Remember we read, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. These are the marriage chambers where we're being joined unto the bridegroom, the lamb, Yahabashai. So that bride adorned with precious stones and pearls and decked out and arrayed in wedding garment, the new city. That's the Lord's inheritance. 
with new bodies coming down with the bridegroom, Yahweh Shai. We must know how to piece the musical notes together. If not, we don't know the song. Bugged out with big dry lips and ashy elbows with no oil. Looking crazy as hell. Let's read that again. We got to take our time. That's the spirit. Ah, the water. Yahweh. Hashem Yahweh Shai. Revelation 21 and 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned or her husband. And that's not Negroes smoking black and mouths with their hat turned to the side or wearing their hat, a baseball cap backwards. Hell no. You're going to burn right here with these cave beasts. Revelation 21 and 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their power. This is beautiful. I'm getting excited. If you don't get aroused when this word is coming out, then you're really not in the truth. You're just here getting entertained. That's it. Smacking on cheese popcorn or some shit. Okay, but the, the day is approaching with those, the true worshipers of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is going to worship him in spirit and in truth. Not a monkey eating a banana sitting on a damn wooden fit somewhere just to get entertained. The Lord just put a fierce spirit on me to those that are playing games or that's not taking the truth seriously. This fierce, bloodthirsty spirit on me. I'm just telling you. Isaiah 54, verse 15. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. So the wicked were created for the day of evil. That waster is who? I shashura. Wasted away is he. Whoa. I'm getting overheated again. I'm running on overdrive. Diesel fuel. And now I need to be refueled. I'm getting heated up. Let's go. The day to be able to break simps in half, to snap backs of broke backs, and to crush K beast, I just get aroused. I can't even explain it in words. A deep level of excitement. Wow. So that waster are the, is the Lord utilizing his sword. Quayan. Little mini dagger. These are the Edomites or the Canaanites, not Canaanites, but the descendants of Cain through the spirit that were regenerated. So the Lord created these devils to cull the herd, to reset or refresh the earth, to cleanse it with fire, to burn their idols and their altars, their groves. Big mama with a blonde wig and jumping around, passing out for the devil so that somebody can come and put a towel over her because she's so excited to be worshiped the devil in his haunted houses. So Big Mama's got to go to wearing camel's hair. All types of bug out wickedness is going on here. And you Jakes are happy and content with this. We're sick of this mess. For the Gabar Ayash. Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. So the smith that blew up the coals, he put it in the mindset of these scientists, specifically Timon, the German scientists, to create these nuclear destructive devices. You see? 
So these are instruments of mass destruction created by wasted away is he, the waster. So Esau's name is a nomen omen. He's going to be wasted away and he was created to create weapons of mass destruction. I'm surprised I haven't seen this one posted. Psalm 7. So that great day of evil is the great and terrible day of the Lord. Right here. Psalm 7 and verse 12. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He had bent his bow and made it ready. So these swords are the, when you look at a nuclear missile from a distance, it looks like a great sword. Psalm 7 and 13. He have also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. So the nuclear missiles unto this day are called arrows. So he created the waster, this madman, Aishashura, wasted away is he, to waste the excess fat on the earth, to trim the fat, to call the herd. Well, this man is a minister of death, a harbinger of sickness, and perdition, which means destruction. A harbinger means his sole purpose or his reason to be created is to bring forth that particular device, to fill his lot of being a minister of death. His religious worships bring forth death. His medicine, he is a physician of no value. His doctrines of science brings forth mental retardation and spiritual numbness. So this man was created to be a waster. All types of witchcraft is in our ingredients. Why you think we got words on the back of the damn Cheerios box that we can't even pronounce? Hydro Chlorocytone veloxicum. The hell is that? That's witchcraft. That's what it is. All types of ingredients that we don't even know how to pronounce. Tetroglycerin chloride hydroxyzine hyglyceride. The hell is this? So this man is made to bring forth confusion, witchcraft, dumbing us down, making us thorough, making our babies sick getting all types of man-made laboratory-created diseases. He's bringing forth three more variants. And without the internal implant, he's going to accuse you of being a biohazard because he cannot monitor your signs or symptoms. So you are a threat to national security because you did not get this implantable, trackable device, radio frequency tracking monitoring device. So you're going to be deemed a threat to national security and ultimately a global hazard or threat to the survival of humanity. When in reality, this man, he's the real threat to humanity, but he's going to flip, flip the script. There's an article came out talking about you so-called Negroes and Native Americans and Latinos are rolled underneath the threat of white supremacists, no matter how dark you are, goes to show that categorizing people based on color lines was a man-made social construct full of holes and vanity, ridiculousness. So the Bible says, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. His medicine, his pharmaceuticals, his bio-warfare, his science, his nuclear instruments of death. The Lord is going to say, 
in the ancient paleo Hebrew tongue, come up hither. And the Bible says their enemies beheld them. So the nations around the world <coughs> are going to look on and witness the greatest show on earth. And the ringleader or the ringmaster is Yahweh by Shem Shai. So he's going to bring up his elect through the fire, through the rings of death, the instruments of mass destruction. So the great ringleader is going to lead us through the fire. It's going to take us through the floods. It's going to gather us from the nations and order our steps to safety. Enter into the Cadillacs of the sky. My people, enter thou into my chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Let's go to Isaiah 43. So he's going to take us through the tsunamis, the floods, through the tempests, through the fire. Isaiah 43, verse 1. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. So he's going to say, Yasharala, come up hither. Let's go. But the caveman and his cohorts and the two-third rebels are going to be burned from off the face of the earth. But the two-third rejects or the degenerates are going to be regenerated through the plant of the Lord, his elect. Isaiah 43, verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the river, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Only the chariots of the Lord is going to preserve life. But there's going to be a residue of the global international elite about two to three miles underground that are going to be the first fruits of slavery. Everything above ground is going to disintegrate, become dust particles, and become a part of the atmosphere. Breathe in by the residue of the Edomites, the first fruits of slavery, are going to be breathing in the dust particles of the masses that got disintegrated. They're going to become dust. But the Lord's elect are going to be protected like the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When Nebuchadnezzar looked into the furnace of the fire, he saw four men but the devil said, I thought we put three men in there. Well, you did, devil, but you discounted the son of the living power. Yahawashai, Hamashiach, the son of the most high. So he's going to return and preserve the apple of his eye. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. So when the nuclear missiles hit, it creates a tsunami effect. And what else? A man-made earthquake. So the fault lines are going to shift. And the ocean shore is going to come upon the landmass. And the earth is going to be turning into hot molten lava. So it's going to create a lake of fire effect. Now a two-third is thinking that's another planet called hell in Mars somewhere. No, that's a bugged out doctrine. So the Bible says, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. So the Lord is going to lift up a standard of fire, but bring his elect through the fire and through the turbulent waters was not Peter guided and led and directed across the turbulent waters to come back to safety? Was not the three Hebrew boys brought through the fire 
of destruction and preserve is not Yahweh by Hashem. Yahweh Shai faithful. Isaiah 54, verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. So who are we to fear the byproduct of the Lord's creation? Why fear the created over the creator? Why fear elements created by the master of elements that created fire, that created water, that created man, that created the air we breathe, that created the elements? Why not tap into the power source of the elements? No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall thou condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So our righteousness rests upon the king of righteousness, Malak Tazadak, Melchizedek. So our righteousness rests upon the mercy seat, the king, not the king of some bug that Jake wearing the crown from the damn movie Wizard of Oz, that bug that ass lion with a broken half plant pot on his head. Okay? Bug out. That's not the king. I'm talking about the king of righteousness. Malak Tazadah. <laughs> you got some Jake out there going to break a damn plant pot <laughs> and put it on his head and call himself the king. That's a bug out. That's not the king. The kings of comedy, maybe. Okay. That's the king of comedy, maybe. Anyway. <laughs> no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall thou condemn. This is the heritage of the saints of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Yeah, that bug got lying from the damn movie Wizard of Oz. You can't. <laughs> and then Toto comes out, and he damn near jumped through his, his suit. So these are fake prophets out here acting big, like a big man, talking about what they're going to do. We got to wait on the Lord. So these weapons are the minions of the wicked. That wicked one, Cain. That's why we went into that name, Cain, which means Quayan, comes from the Hebrew Quayan. So even no tongue that shall rise against thee shall prosper. Now we're terrorists. We're black identity extremists. Now we're rolled under white supremacists. How in the hell can a so-called Negro, which means dark skin, be a white supremacist? So listen, this man is pulling at all strings. He's on a cliff trying to grab, on, grab onto a shoestring to, pre to prevent from falling. So the devil is falling and falling fast. He's grabbing at shoestrings. All right? A black identity extremist is now a white supremacist. Go look up the article. These so-called Negroes and Native Americans and Latinos are now white supremacists. So he's pulling at all strings and punching at every stop. So when somebody posts that make a diviners mad, so they can't put their arms around a spiritual force. They cannot tabulate the intensity of the power of the Holy Spirit. So they're trying to measure it and they're trying to figure out how to attack it. And it's making them crazy. They're like, how do we attack this? Is it a black threat? Is it a white threat? Is it a multi-denominational threat? Is it an international threat? So the diviners are mad. They're going crazy. What is this doctrine? This strange and peculiar doctrine. 
Where does it stem from? How did it come about? Who are the ringleaders? Who are the teachers? Who gave them this wisdom? How in the world can those that were called black, dirty, second-class citizens, three-fifths of a man, nobodies, castaways, Gentiles, be called the sons of the living God or the apple of his eye in the last days? How can this be? How is this possible, mate? Let's close out here. Isaiah 44, verse 24. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that born thee from the womb. I'm excited. Isaiah 44 and 24. See, I get just excited about this. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that born thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, that frustrateth the tokens of the liars and maketh diviners mad, that turneth, that turneth wise men backwards and maketh their knowledge foolish. So now black identity extremists are white supremacists. So Esau is going crazy. So you took the apple of the Lord's eye. That's the most sensitive part of the most high, you devils. So once you touch gold and reap the benefits of it, now you're stuck holding the bag as the robber, the thief, the bad guy. So the Lord is going to enter into the house of the thief with his chariots pursuant to Zechariah 5. The tabernacle of David is being raised up from the graves, from the ashes, and from the dust of the earth. The temple of the Lord is being rebuilt, refined, polished up, and built back better, strengthened through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Shai built upon the chief cornerstone, the foundation, and the author and finisher of our faith. Temperate mortar, Klam Yasharala, Klam Yasharala, and Abad Baba. What you got next? Lord willing, Baraka Thum, Shalom. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> Yup, boom. Camp Bedrock Rock is going to pass away with a great noise. And the elements of this pedo queendom is going to melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the inhabitants thereof, the groves and the idols, are going to be burned up. All praises to Yahweh by Shimmy Habashai. But a remnant, a noble plant, is going to be preserved and spread like the Garden of Eden, the new paradise. Let's go. Let's go. Bless you too, beloved. Rock a thumb. I can't even end it. I'm so excited. Still turn up. Let's go. Shalom.